And that's what happened in Mazatlan, the scene in Mexico where the total solar eclipse first arrived on Monday. So these were some of the first people to experience it. There are Canadians in that group. There's some of the group that we talked about just last week before they flew to Mazatlan in video captured by our next guest, David Makepeace. Welcome home. Thank you so much, Heather. I love hearing the screams <laughs> of joy as the eclipse hits. I love it every time. Well, it does. It, you can see how excited they were. Shall I ask just a really simple question? Or how was it? Are you still on a high? I'm still on a high. I still don't know what I'm in. The eclipse was only about 24 hours ago or 48 hours ago, and I've only been on the ground back here in Toronto for 12 hours. I uh, haven't even processed all the video yet, so th there's a lot going on in here. Okay, well, process your memories with me. Number one, you were right to travel. We talked before you left about how you could have stayed at home and experienced a total solar eclipse at home, but... You know, the risk of cloud made it more appealing to go to Mexico. I think you were right, because we in Niagara, we had a lot of cloud, glimpses but clouds. So obviously, conditions were better there. Were they optimal? You know, uh, this eclipse, I think, is going to be characterized by the uh, ever presence of this high cirrus cloud, which was um, sort of dogged the entire eclipse track almost across the entire continent. And that was similar uh, for us as well in Mazatlan. It was not perfect. Ah. We didn't have optimal conditions that we were looking for, but we still saw the eclipse through this thin cloud. So that's kind of interesting. Maybe that was different for number 18 for you. Tell us all about the experience then. Well, the, the eclipse experience was still delivered with all the impact and the majesty that I would have expected from a total eclipse. But what was fascinating about this is that with all the, the high cirrus cloud that was rolling in through uh, Mazatlan in the days prior to, and then right up onto eclipse day, we were still able to see the eclipse through it. Even with Venus staying in the eclipse sky for the entire time during totality. So this was amazing to me that with so much relative cloud cover that we could still still observe totality right through all of that cloud, as some of the pictures um, can easily show. I, so we're looking at your video, David. It's fantastic. The diamond ring and then totality and, and prominences. And there's the corona. Wow, you had a beauty. We did have a beauty, and the thing that excites me the most, I think, is the shadow racing. I love to be able to capture the celestial mechanics at these events, and there is that one image of the shadow racing in in the time lapse and then racing away. For me, being able to capture the action of the solar system like that is probably the, the most rewarding of any of the captures that I got. So, was there anything that you observed this time, David, for the first time that you haven't seen in the previous 17? Well, it's this entire issue around the high cirrus cloud. It added um, such an element both in the environment and then directly on top of the eclipse. I was amazed that uh, the diamond ring could be seen, all of the incredible pink prominences all the way around the outside of the dark limb of the moon, all still visible. Yes, we weren't able to see some of the very far end of the very faint, uh, wispy ends of the corona, but with the shadow moving and the shadow being dark and on top of us and then rushing away up into Mexico, Mexico and Texas. Uh, I just couldn't hope for anything more. It's just, to, I'm so glad that you're sharing your video with us to see what, uh, what you experienced on Monday. The pictures and video from home are fantastic as well. Some of the people who are cheering that we can hear in the background are the 25 others you took to Mazatlan to experience with you, uh, close friends and people wanting to have that total eclipse experience, that commonality, yeah. David, uh, and, and watching them. There they are. There's your big group. Sharing it with them, what did that add? Well, I mean, it added everything. You know, it's rare that I actually am at an eclipse with 25 people um, that I actually traveled with. Um, the groups are generally smaller, uh, but we had so many first timers at this eclipse. And to be able to share the conversations afterwards um, about the intense emotional impact the totality delivers under any circumstances, the tears, uh, the falling down to the ground on your knees uh, during the event, and then in the hours afterwards, the sort of silence to terms with it. Um, so much happens during those four minutes that uh, it's very difficult to understand what you feel. And it was fascinating to see with uh, the first timers uh, that is still true in totality, no matter who you are or where you go.
That's true. Really, it does take time to sort of observe, uh, absorb and process. And one of the emotions that many people feel is that sense of deflation or almost disappointment that it's over because it does go by so quickly. And that's often what spurs people on, as I understand it, to become, like you, eclipse chasers. So I'm looking ahead. I think it's August, but it's definitely 2026. Uh, Greenland, Iceland, Spain. Do you have your ticket already? So uh, what's happened in recent weeks is uh, I've been invited to come and be the eclipse expert on a icebreaker that is going to see the eclipse in and out of the fjords on the eastern side of Greenland. No. <laughs> so that's wonderful news. I'll do tell you, you that. need an assistant as my hand raises? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Wow. So that would be 90. How many do you think you hope to see in your lifetime, David? Well, you know, God willing, every single one of them that I am alive to see. I mean, if I can double my my total at the moment, it would be terrific. Um, but I will take every one that I get, even if they're wheeling me into the shadow on a wheelchair. <laughs> I, I am going. <laughs> because yeah, I come back to your favorite line: "You must see a total solar eclipse before you die." Does that advice hold true this morning, David? Make peace. Oh, uh, more than ever. I, I mean, I just can't wait now for 2026. So great to, to see your pictures, to hear your impressions, and uh, to look ahead. What an exciting two years out for you. Thank you, David. Thanks for the time. A pleasure. Thanks so much.